He's a spoiled child with nukes for toys, and he's aiming them right at us. That's right. North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un hates the U.S., and he wants us destroyed. This past weekend, he was busy playing in his little sandbox with his ICBM Tonka toys, showing off his long-range nuclear missile capability to his nine-year-old daughter, and the rest of the world for that matter. The Rodung Sin Mun, this is the North Korea-run state media, they reported that the test was a success. Of course it was. And they should serve as a warning to the U.S. and South Korea. And then he went on and accused Washington of frantically escalating tensions by bringing nuclear-capable weapon systems to the Korean Peninsula. And that's part of these ongoing joint exercises. I'll talk about that in a minute. But he's very upset, and he's doing something about it. Now, the very next day, North Korean soldiers loaded a tactical ballistic missile with a simulated version of a nuclear warhead. And they sent that 500 miles over the Sea of Japan and detonated it as an airburst, 2,600 feet up above the sea. Now, I'm sure it was a beautiful air detonation. And if it were loaded with its 500 kilogram nuclear warhead that it's capable of carrying, now it wasn't, but if it were, that is a, a, a bomb that's 33 times more powerful than the one that was dropped on Hiroshima. And if it went off over Tokyo, this is what it would look like. It would annihilate 700,000 people and injure another 1.7 million. That's one of his little bombs. Now, experts on Monday assessed that the launch was from a newly built silo on top of a hill at a new launching ground, and it was near uh, a, a new missile engine test that was used back in December. So great, they have a new launch site, big deal. But for Kim's part, this was more about sending a message to the West. And as their state news reported, it quote, proved once again, the reliability of nuclear explosion control and triggering devices in the nuclear warhead assembly. All right, now that's just their short range missile systems. According to the U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency, the North Korean ballistic missile inventory includes mobile systems designed to be fired from vehicles, subs, and some fixed ones that would fly from silos, like the one that they shot this test one from. And their arsenal of ICBMs can reach out and touch us anytime they please. Take a look at the range here. They have a Hwansong-14 that's capable of a 10,000-kilometer range. That's far enough to reach the Midwest. And another one that's a 12,000-kilometer range called the Hwansong-15. Now, little Kim, little Kim can push a button and take out anywhere in the United States from Los Angeles to New York City. So we know he has toys, plenty of toys. But what about toy soldiers to go along with them? Well, he's got those too. In fact, a day after launching the missile, around 800,000 young North Koreans signed up for military service and vowed to completely wipe out enemies and unify the Koreas. This was, again, according to their state media. The media said the youth vanguard rose up at once to join the war to defend the homeland and the war to destroy the enemy. That would be us. More specifically, the quote said, quote, the U.S. imperialists and puppet traitors who are trying to destroy our independence and right to live and develop. So the U.S. imperialists, that's us, and the puppet traitors, that would be the South Koreans. All right, we're trying to destroy them. So why the increase in nuclear missile demonstrations and why the sudden flood of new recruits? Well, it turns out North Korea views the recent U.S. and South Korean war games as a little confrontational. You see, last week, we started a joint military exercise with our Indo-Pacific allies, and this was in an exercise called Freedom Shield 23. You can look it up. And they started that on March 13th, and it continues to run throughout this week. So it was, I believe, an 11-day exercise. And as one of the highlights over the weekend, the Republic of Korea, South Korea, ROC, Republic of Korea, and the U.S. conducted a combined aerial exercise that sent U.S. B-1B strategic bombers that can carry nukes 
escorted by the ROC Air Force's F-35A stealth fighters and the U.S. Air Force's F-16s. And they carried these exercises out over the Korean Peninsula in a training exercise designed to display our military might and showcase deterrence in action. The U.S. Indo-Pacific Command said the training was to assess ROC and U.S. force interoperability, increase deployment capability of flexible response forces, and increase robust wartime strategic strike capabilities. That is a mouthful, but that's how we term it. Now, candidly, I am thrilled we are increasing our warfighting capability and readiness. That's what our military needs to be doing each and every day. They need to wake up and work on warfighting. They exist to fight and win our nation's wars. But for Pyongyang's part, that's the capital of North Korea, I think it's very logical to expect that they're agitated. Wouldn't you be? In fact, their repeated refrains are that provocations by Washington and Seoul are crossing a line that can no longer be tolerated and that North Korea seeks to demonstrate it can overpower enemy military capabilities. So they are both obligated to show strength of their own with these missile test launches and opportunistic to rally their people with this soldier recruitment drive. No doubt they're blaming the U.S. imperialists for their people's dire situation, whether it's true or not. Recall just a week ago, I reported to you that the people in North Korea are starving. They've even cut rations for their soldiers. And yet, they're the reason why the 800,000 new recruit are signing up. And if that number is true, they just gain more soldiers that hate us in one weekend than we have serving in our entire U.S. Army right now. So while we flex our muscle and give North Koreans more reasons to hate us, Kim, little Kim, continues to sulk. He's not being respected as a global superpower that he wants to be. His daddy always used to give him what he wanted, and now he can't have it. But we all know that most of the time, spoiled little kids somehow find a way to get what they want. And on the rare occasion that they don't, what do they do? That's right. They break all the toys in the sandbox so that no one else can play with them either. In other words, they go nuclear. Tell me what you think. Where is this thing going and what is it all about? And don't forget to hit the subscribe and the like button. If you have comments, leave them. If you see something or you, you want me to talk about something, let me know and I'll do my best. But until next time, be ready, be strong, be alert, and keep on prepping.